Today on BRS TV, Marine Pier versus Deep Sand Beds. Hi, I'm RT, your host of BRS TV's 52 FAQ, where we answer all kinds of reefing questions from our popular series, 52 Weeks of Reefing. Today we're answering Mac Jones' question from week 13. When Marine Pier ceramic biomedia plates are used as substrate in the sump without water flowing through them, wouldn't they just become anaerobic filters over time? Why not save $500 and just have a deep sand bed for filtration? Even if that was the case, I think most people are going to be happier with the Marine Pier blocks, and I'll share why. Mac has two pretty highly debated topics wrapped up in one question. Deep sand beds in general, and can Marine Pier provide an environment capable of converting nitrogen into nitrogen gas? I've seen enough deep sand beds that have been effective at processing and essentially removing nitrate, so this is a legit question. For those of you that are not familiar with deep sand beds, they're typically six to eight inches deep and designed to promote an anaerobic area in the tank where there's little to no oxygen. The bacteria that populate this area utilize oxygen found as part of the nitrate molecule for biological function and release the free nitrogen to bubble out of the tank. On occasion, you'll see deep sand beds being implemented in new setups, however popularity has dropped. Frankly, it's not the most attractive look for a tank, and there are a whole slew of ways to control nitrate nowadays without all that sand in the tank. It's also super hard to remove and serves as a giant detritus and nutrient sink, potentially even a contaminant sink, and has the potential to become toxic over time. I'd go as far as saying some reefers feel like they're more or less a nutrient or contaminant time bomb, or one day they could be the cause of algae outbreaks, coral mortality, or even a complete crash. Now that last part can't be confirmed, and I guess I don't have an opinion one way or another, outside of the fact that it's very obviously a detritus trap, and long-term negative outcomes have been stated enough times that deep sand beds are a pretty big rarity these days. To help combat some of these issues, many reefers started making remote deep sand beds, or like Mac mentioned, just filling the refugium area with 6 to 8 inches of sand. The biggest benefit of a remote sand bed is that you can remove the sand every few years and replace it or clean it much easier from a remote location compared to in the actual tank. And of course, you don't have to look at all the sand in your tank either. Also say sand isn't cheap, to do this properly we'd have to use a couple hundred dollars worth of sand as well. So I use Marine Pier instead. Many aquarists theorize the same thing happens inside the marine pier blocks as a deep sand bed. We've never confirmed that with actual testing, but the BRS team has certainly heard enough anecdotal evidence to support the claim that there's a very good chance the marine pier blocks are achieving the goal of creating anaerobic zones where the transition from nitrate to nitrogen gas is happening and reducing the nitrate levels in your tank. The marine pier blocks are extremely porous. The material itself is about double the surface area per gram over Reef Saver and Pukani, and about the same as Fiji. However, where it differs is how that surface area is an interconnected network of pores. Some of you may have already seen this demo where we glued a plumbing fitting to the top of a block and you can see how water just runs straight through the network of pores within the marine pier. When placed in a low flow area like the bottom of a fuge, it's theorized that it allows enough water to flow through to process the water efficiently, but the aerobic bacteria on the surface layer strip the oxygen out to create an anaerobic center. It's hard to know if you need a thick block to do that, or even if that can happen in the smaller balls or even the plates. I'm going to give you a sneak peek into the future. This is something we're going to test in the not too distant future and share with all of you. I will note that some reefers have claimed that the type of ceramic that Marine Pier is made from can release small amounts of aluminum into the tank. I guess I can't confirm that and I don't think anyone's definitely shown this as a major issue regardless. I can say the results are results and I've never seen a negative reaction. Many of the tanks here at BRS use them and the reviews from customers who actually use them are overwhelmingly positive. Like everything, there's upsides and downsides and a handful of unknowns to every approach. End of story, the reason I'd suggest the marine pier over a deep sand bed is in most installations it's going to cost about the same as buying all that sand, way easier to install, and doesn't require all that maintenance. Overall, I think the long term risk to the tank with a deep sand bed is substantially higher. Couple tips with marine pier, make sure to rinse it prior to use to get all the dusty fines off that are created during transport. The material is also fairly fragile, so I'd place it in an area where it's unlikely to get disturbed often. If you're using it for normal biological cycle to back up or support your live rock, you can put it in a high flow area of the tank. If you want to use it to reduce nitrate, I'd put it in a fairly low flow area like the bottom of your sump. If you're interested in learning more about the cycle or natural methods of removing nitrate, check out week 13, ammonia, not as simple as you think, the ideal tank cycle. Or week 26, how to leverage bacteria for a cleaner reef tank. Don't forget, answering your questions is what the 52 FAQ is all about, so ask us something you want to know in the comments area down below. See you next week with the next 52 FAQ.